Welcome back to Singapore as we are about to get session two underway. Six games in the book, six more to go. Quarterfinal spots at stake. By the end of the day today, we'll know two men's, uh, four men's quarterfinalists and four women's quarterfinalists as the men in B and D are competing and the women in A and C are competing. So we will start with the women in group C. Mongolia and Philippines. Out come Mongolia, who found themselves in a battle in their, well, not really, I was just joking. I, I was hoping to make you laugh, Angela. I didn't, it, it wasn't a battle at all. It was 21 to four <laughs> against Malaysia. They handled them easily, but it was not, admittedly, the uh, the prettiest game that you would see from the Mongolians. So they'll look to put forth a better effort this time around. And they'll certainly have a more challenging opponent in the Philippines who we saw emerge from qualifying draw action. And they are loaded. They are a team that are going to play with a lot of toughness and match that intensity that we see from the Mongolians. So we will see the Gilas in just a bit. Actually, right now, out they come in the blue with Camille Claren, Jasmine Jolson, Kay Pingle, and Mika Cacho. Cacho has been impressive during the qualifiers, Kyle. She's been doing it all. Cacho tough. Defensively on the inside and offensively. Of course, they got the sharp shooting of JJ, Jasmine Jolson. So the Gilas have the weaponry to make this, uh, make this a game. Now Mongolia, with a win, would secure the top spot out of the group. And obviously a quarterfinal berth to come with that. The Philippines will have one more game to play. Uh, later on this evening as they will lace them up against Malaysia and that will officially solidify the teams that will be going to the quarterfinals out of this group. This is the first of two main draw group play days as we introduce Shirong Shi and Edmund Ho, our two officials for this contest. And we'll be getting this one underway pretty soon. So Kyle, obviously we are looking at the Philippines like a team that could potentially challenge Mongolia for supremacy in the group. They haven't played against Malaysia yet. That's their first game of the competition. A win right now sets them up for top spot in the group. Yeah, and the, the first game, obviously a win by 17 points, but we didn't really get to see what Mongolia was really made of because, I mean, they were they were much better than than their opponent. It was it was pretty clear. But I think against the Philippines, this will be the real barometer uh, for Mongolia. So we're gonna see how this one plays out. We got a 10 minute sprint in front of us. Claren cleared to shoot. She misses it. A narrow miss, but still a miss. The defense tightened up. A jump ball that's as good as a steal. Cacho get in there, mixing it up. We've mentioned her name a few times, haven't we? I think we're gonna keep mentioning that name, but keep a lookout for Claren. Oh, yeah, that's gonna Cacho. be a travel, yes. Definitely. Don't say what. Definitely a travel. You cannot take two steps as you get the ball. Establish a pivot foot. Keep the footwork clean. The ball fake. Aryan Setseg cannot get that one to go. Claren swings it over. Pingo to Josin. She lets the two go. She get that one from QC. It's two zip Philippines. What do you notice about the Philippines and how they play, Kyle? They move that ball around with a quickness. They share the wealth. They're not stagnant. They move it around and they shoot that thing with a vengeance. Josin, we know she was the 
most consistent two-point shooter for her team during the qualifying draw. You got the slashing ability of Claren and Pingle as well, who creates off of penetration. And then Kacho, who just, she likes, she likes doing the dirty work. She likes grinding down there in the post and making those defensive plays. And she's also the best screener that they have. Setting those screens. Uh oh Step back. Get over here. Josie with the mid-range strike. Three-zip Philippines. Oh, yeah. Josie, no hesitation. <laughs> She'll miss that one short. I she doubt. needs to keep shooting it, Kyle. Shoot that thing. Oh, Pingo hit her with the hezzy. Filipinas, jumping out the gate. Indra, oh, you won't get a better look than that. She can't make it count. Cacho, she'll give it up. They swing it to the left corner. Joseph, she got the green light. You know what they say, speed kills. And Filipinas playing with a lot of speed right now. Cayo Pingo, relentless on that baseline, putting pressure on Mongolia, keeping the Mongolian ladies on their heels. And most importantly, Mongolia hasn't been able to even start thinking about setting up their offense. Seems like they're only playing defense for the past minute and some. Pingo able to really disrupt the defense with her quickness. And uh, that doesn't amount to a score for the Philippines, Claren misses. But two players that penetrate, a shooter in Jolson, and an all-around in Cacho is what they present. Meantime, the Mongolians, they've got the slashing and scoring ability of Kulan, the shooting ability of Indra from the outside, but they were not on the same page. And some of that grit and toughness from Aryan Setseg on the inside. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, wide open, that, that. They get a passing grade with that possession. Indra can't put it in. Kulan battling, grabs the board up and in. And Mongolia are finally on the board. 5-1 start though for the Philippines. They cooking. Cacho using that pivot. Shot off the mark. Kulan swinging through. Oh, great pass. Oh, Aryan Sensei couldn't pay it off. Cacho. That's quickly cleared. Mongolia want to get it down in the post. Kulan going to work. She has punched the clock and got Mongolia within three. Kyle, obviously Mongolia is going to have to press on their physical advantage down low. Oh! Two to your head. Counted plus the foul. Josen with a master stroke out in the deep end. And she'll have a chance at the line to extend this lead for the Philippines. It's the battle of two styles. Mongolia right now hitting the mouth early. And Cookies, Pingle, carried it. She was thinking about passing it as she stole it. Obviously, that was the right read. She was looking to see if a fast break opportunity presented itself, but unfortunately, carried the ball a little bit too much. We got the first TV timeout, Kyle. Mongolia in trouble early. Yeah, they're, they're on their heels a little bit. And um, this isn't exactly a surprise because we, we knew how, how dangerous this Philippines team could be. We knew the heart that they play with, the passion they play with. And they put on a pretty good display, I'd say, this so far. They're moving the ball. Their shooters are shooting. Pingle is penetrating. Concho is playing. Mongolia just have to match it. Mongolia's not exactly playing their game, in, in my opinion. And Pingle, once again, the aggressiveness paying off. But you got to give credit to the Filipino defense for the reason why Mongolia's not playing their game. And it's kind of a trap when you're playing such an easy first game to then have to step it up with intensity against a much worthy opponent. Saikon misses. Kulan kicks it. Aryan sets it. Rainbow doesn't go. Out of bounds. No, there's a foul. Foul blue. First on the Philippines. 
five point lead is not a safe lead in 3x3. We know that, especially with 630 to play. They're not getting the shoot from Indra that they need. She's still going to shoot it. That one comes up shot. Pingle with the quick step. She gets deed up, poked out, and it goes off of her foot, apparently. Or did it? No, it's blue ball. It's, okay, no. Blue ball. It's blue ball. I read the lips, Kyle. I saw Edmund say, but I couldn't, you know, hear it. <laughs> you got the eagle eye. Cacho! Oh, that, yeah. That was a foul. Wait a minute. Being a cameraman is a dangerous job, Kyle. <laughs> we did a social media post at FIBA3x3. It was funny. It was showing uh, all the collisions, or most of the collisions, between players and that particular camera spot right underneath the basket. We'll see it right now. And boom. That's right in your living room right there, up close and personal. Well, there's much worse in life than uh, having a room to sight on <laughs> landing on your lap. I'll say that. Oh, you're going to get in trouble. You better stop. No, I'm just saying. It's much worse. <laughs> Eight to two. As Aryan sets in, doing some work on the inside. Clarence. Beautiful. With Mike Jack. Uh oh. You got to get turnover. Nice start to this contest, especially for the Philippines. Well, Kyle, I got a question for you. Would what? you rather have Kelman Poto landing on your lap? Oh, God. There you go. Absolutely See, I, not. That's what I was saying. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Bingo to the cup. Too fast, too furious. Indra responding right back. Press the accelerator, get to the cup, clearing. That's a bad pass. Pinker still trying to get stuck, trying to get to the defense. And Kulan is trying to revive the flame. She's getting after her girls. She wants a reaction. She's the unquestioned leader on this Mongolian team. Oh, yeah. And she's earned it. She's an Olympian and has been a part of so many successful campaigns for the Mongolian women as Kulan splits the D, misses the crib. Aryan Setsek's got it back, makes her move, misses the shot as well. Kacho draws the foul, which is now number five on Mongolia. Correct. So one more to give for Mongolia, who trill it by six. And Mongolia slowly but surely getting closer to foul trouble, Kyle. And that's something that could really play to the hand of the Filipinas. Your son. Had a good look. Oh, tough drive. Sarah Kong. Oh, tough shot. Good defense. Mutsai Khan, oh, offensive foul. Kulan was moving while she was trying to set, set the screen. First screen set. Gacho rolling fast and Joseph is a flame, an absolute flame. 12-5. She's a flame spreading to wildfire. Joseph. Oh, she gets more goals than your vision board. Back to back deuces from JJ. Told you, told you, Kyle. She's spreading to a wildfire. You can't stop it no more. If anything, the windier it gets, the more problematic it's gonna be for Mongolia. Mongolia with the, the bonus over their heads now. Philippines with a comfortable lead. What can stop them in this game? Great defense. She will recover and score. 
But they're going to have to get a hand up on that lady right there. Joseph, she'll give it up. They swing it. Cross court. Claren now working from the Indio logo. Steps in and misses. Oh. And Nengo hits the deck. 354 left. It has been all Philippines. And particularly Jasmine Joseph for her ability to knock down those twos. It's made a huge difference for the Philippines in maintaining this lead. And Mongolia have a little bit of soul searching to do. And Kulan has tried to revive the flame, but the flame is on another side right now. The flame is not wearing white. The flame is wearing blue. There is still enough time on the clock. Problem is, Filipinas very close to 21, much closer than Mongolia. And the foul trouble looming gives so many options to the Philippines that can fake out the long range and just go to the cup. And the contacts could get whistled to provide them with free throws. Oh, Sarakam nearly lost the possession. Late in the shot clock, Kulan heaves up some mess. And Cacho is down and in some pain. I don't really know what went down. Can we see a replay maybe on that rebound? She's in pain. So Cacho's still down. We, we spoke about her toughness, so ain't, she ain't faking us out here. No, she's not, but yeah, I don't really know what happened. Because she was not concerned with the ball at the moment of the fall. Nacho well, moving very, very, very gingerly on that knee. She can hardly put pressure on it at the moment. Such a key piece on this Philippine team. And for now, the Gilas will have to play without her. Whether, whether or not she's able to return or not is in question. They need a towel on the court. There we go. Get out of there. Get out there. Thank you. You missed the spot. Thank you. Right there. Well, 340 to go, 14-7. Philippines are in a good, uh, better than a good position, a great position. Yeah, but losing Cacho at this moment could provide a little boost to Mongolia. Unless slick move, can't make the layup. Travel. Sure it is. Back to it we go with Joseph. Step it up. Oh, great activity. Look at that. Pango. Joseph, thinking about it, she wants to screen. Joseph in and out, drives, runs it, gets it to Claren, Claren just off target. That's a bad miss too. Indra cannot find any consistency. Aryan said, said, close range, that's a no as well, and Philippines give it right back. Mongolia need to ignite some scoring. And I think that Indra would be the go-to gal in that situation, in that scenario, with Kulan uh, getting a breather on the bench. They go to Indra to start the possession. Indra steps up from the logo, but her stroke is broke. Pingo. No. Indra. That one on the way. They're striking nothing but iron. Johnson, dribble drive, deed up, not cleanly. Andrew called for the foul, that's number seven on Mongolia. So two free throws upcoming in a dominant, dominant game for the Philippines. Warning for behavior against Mongolia. 
can't be chit-chatting too much. So Joseph putting together a, an impressive individual campaign. Uh, I might have jinxed her. They call it the announcer's jinx. Isn't it? You start systematic? talking good about somebody and then they do. Okay, she knocks down the second. Still doesn't take away from the fact that she's been balling this game. Johnson will get called for the pushing foul. It's only the third team foul against the Philippines. They still have a, a cushion. They can maintain that aggressiveness without um, paying the price for it. Oh, and look who's back. Cacho's back. Oh, I like the sight of that. Cacho is back. With 2.13 to play, not that they even need her services at this point. I think this game is in the bag. Hard to see Mongolia be able to erase a deficit like this, given the way they played so far. Get over here. I got something for you. Joe Sid. Not that time. Look, look at the effort, though. Even though Mongolia ends up with the possession, Aryan sets it. Not that time. Powell, if you're the Philippines, you'll just hold on to the ball. You move it around. You take good shots. And it's a done deal. Oh, stepped on the line. And uh, Cacho is coming back. That's good to see. She had a hard time getting up off the court and there was some concern as to whether or not she was going to be able to, to play. Maybe she got hit on it and any hit on a spot that's already in pain oh, makes it Angel. quite difficult. That was a nice shot. It was. It's going to be too little too late though. That shot off the back iron. Minute 22 to go. Indra. Firing at will. It is desperation time for Mongolia. If they're going to make a game of this in any way whatsoever, they've oh, got to hit a yes. barrage of twos. Oh, yes! She faked him like a Gucci bag. And that Gucci got one seat. <laughs> 18-8. I like that. That's one. a gucky bag. That's a gucky bag. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're, we're terrible. We are. 40 seconds to go. I tell you who's been impressive in this game. Who's that? Pango. She did it all kinds of different ways. She started off providing such great energy, attacking the gaps, the baseline, the middle, you name it. And then she gave um, the Philippines so many new possessions with that defensive aggressiveness. She deflected the ball out of bounds three to four times. She stole a few. And then she found a way to, to be efficient from the outside. Gave us the biggest highlight of the game with the fake handoff finishing with the soft touch off the glass. I'm telling you, spectacular performance from Pengel. Well, something that you can't quantify in stats is the opportunity she creates for her teammates simply off of her penetration as we get a look at the leading scores. Jasmine Johnson, 15 big ones in this game. Unbelievable. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. No, that's her number. I, okay, I was gonna say 15. No, that can't be right. Anyway, well, she's 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 leading the way in the scoring category. She's got a couple of knockdowns from long range. She she got about seven to eight points for sure. Bengal got about four or five. I don't remember if Katja scored, but it's a it's a real team effort. Real team effort. You had me confused for a second. 15. I was like, no, I. I She's got 10. She's got 10. Not far off, but she's got 10. And Pango got five. There you go. I Thank you, Bogdan. I looked over at the uh, at the graphic of the leading scores. I saw 15. Well, I didn't realize that that, that was her number. Kyle, that, that, those 10 points feel like 15. I'll tell you that, though, because they've been just daggers through the heart of the Mongolians. A double-digit performance. She's got more than half of her team's points, and she ain't done yet. Who else want to get on the bucket list? You? And who you? else is going to steal that ball but Pango? Oh, man. What what a game by the Philippines. Long range. Why not? That will seal it. But this game has been over for 
five minutes now. 19 to eight, it was never in question. Jasmine Johnson, she got all the J's and she brought the J and leads the Philippines to a 19 to eight win over Mongolia. So they keep the good times rolling coming out of the qualifying draw and maintain that momentum here the first day of the main draw. So Mongolia will wrap up one and one. And their fate will be decided when the Philippines play Malaysia in the last game in uh, women's draw, Pool C. That one's coming up later. Coming up right now, it's Camille Claren. She's standing by with Angelo Takarakis, and we want to see what she's got to say. I know they got to be feeling good after the Gila showed all that pool song. Angelo, take it away. So I heard you say, why me? I got zero points, but you were spectacular during the qualifying draw, by the way, so you deserve to be represented for your country. Plus, you had the, the better seat to watch the show. A great team effort. We had a feeling that the Filipinas was going to come blazing in rhythm. Mongolia is a powerhouse in 3x3, so you had to be the aggressor. What was the key in this matchup? Defense, it's always been defense and moving the ball. Uh, as you can probably tell, our chemistry is amazing. And that's what really we, what we rely on. There's so many girls on our team who can score. It's just a matter of who on what day. Talking about Cacho, she good? Because I saw like the knee buckle a little bit. What happened there? She's good. She's stronger than most people, so there's no need to worry about her. So I'm pretty sure you're confident about your next matchup. It's a great way for you to prepare for the main draw since now you're in the driver's seat to finish top of the group. What will be the main key for you to avoid an upset against Malaysia? Just to keep doing what we need to do. Um, obviously, emphasize on defense. That's really it. If we can stop them from shooting and, and contest, that's all we need to do, really. So I guess the Puso was strong today. Oh, yes. Congratulations. Good luck for the rest. Great job. Great work. Angelo, Camille, how about them Gilas? Man, what a performance here for the Philippines, who stepped into the square and put a beat down on Mongolia like they hadn't seen in a while. They gave them everything they wanted and even the things they didn't want. Crossover, step back, splash, drives and kicks, great def defensive plays. We're going to see how the Philippines wrap up their campaign today again later on against Malaysia. Coming up next, we got Chinese Taipei and Singapore. That's a play-in game to the quarterfinals. And that is on deck from here in Singapore. Stick around. You know we got more coming.
Chinese Taipei with another creative introduction. Can they get creative on the court, though? That's what I want to see, along with the creative in, in, uh, introduction. They come out in the white jerseys. Now they got to deal with Singapore and this raucous home crowd. Chinese Taipei, who suffered a overtime loss to China. It was, uh, it was an ugly game. They only managed nine points. They have got to put a better effort forward in this contest against Singapore, uh, not just from a talent perspective, but also dealing with the atmosphere and the crowd. But I'll ask you, because you actually play. Some players actually like it better when the crowd is against them. It gives them some motivation, too. So I don't know. It's, it, it depends on what school of thought you, you subscribe to. Well, I'll tell you this. And you know I'm half Greek, so we used to have very wild opponent fans. And it used to give me, like, it used to get my blood going. Okay. Because that's the competitor, that's the dog in you. Right. And my mentor uh, used to be the same way. He, he preferred to play on the road than at home because he would love to shut the opponent's fans down. So there's a strong feeling there. But I won't lie to you. The most times I, I had good goosebumps as a player was playing at home with a wild home crowd. Okay. That's a different kind of emotion. Right, it's different kind. Yeah, that's a different kind of emotion. But we'll see how Chinese Taipei are able to manage. But I think the worst thing for them would be getting into an early deficit, you know, say four or five points. This crowd is rocking. The Singapore team is, is confident, momentum. That, that would be ideal for Singapore. Hey, you know, Kyle, every time you're playing in front of your fans, everything gets magnified. True facts. Now it's time to show and prove as a foul is called on that drive. This is Pool A action, by the way, the last Pool A game of the day for the women. Crossover, Chin. Almost put the defender on her chin. Stumbling after that move. 1-1 one, one as both teams trade buckets. Sue, see soon later. She makes the quick move and gets in for the score. One point advantage for Chinese Taipei as Singapore will respond quickly. You gotta like the pace of this game right now. 2-2, two, two, the buck is getting traded. They're playing with the with intention to be aggressive, and it's paying off for both teams. And Singapore not waiting a few minutes to get its first bucket of the game. I think they got the jitters out. Playing against China the first game was probably the best thing that could happen for them in a matchup for a ticket to the main draw now with Chinese Taipei. Yep, uh, Singapore losing to China 12 to 20 in game number one. Chinese Taipei in a closer game with China. Late in the shot clock, no good, rebound. Kicked out. Seven seconds on the shot clock. No need to panic, but they won't have the possession anyway. That's wasted out of bounds in a 2-2 tie to start. Ball is poked away for the moment. Good. Misses it. Gets it back. Whoa. Trying to beat the shot clock. Singapore setting up shot. Sing Yu sets the screen. Sarah. What in the world? What's that? <laughs> I finished it for you. <laughs> oh, that's the big girl move right there. Chin. Stepping through, get out the way. Who? Going right back at it, though. Same type of move. Clear some space. Does not connect on the bucket this time. Chinese Taipei up one. And the action is heating up here at the OCBC Square in Singapore. Been through two days of qualifying draw action. 
Today, our first day in main draw pool play. Three, two. We got a flex cam invite. Okay, I see you. That'll be right there. Okay, we can. We're... <laughs> Chinese Taipei also with no fouls at this point. That's a good sign. We are still in the early goings. A precision pass sets up a shot attempt that draws a foul. As a consequence, Hung Team Kuo will shoot one. One thing we can say about today, it was hot. It was hotter than the, the previous two days. It's sticky out here. Yeah, it's cooled down now. A little bit. The temperatures now are good. At the start of the day, it was blazing. Yeah, because you have the sun on us the whole time. So for the players, you know it translates into heavy legs. I think it's time for us to... Oh, we got I, it now. We got I don't it now. know yet. We'll see. Oh, good defense, or maybe not so good defense. Did, did, did you flex? I, don't I didn't you flex. Did. You didn't? Oh, you need to we flex. We haven't got the, key, the cue yet. I'm not sure, because I was flexing for sure. Where are your muscles at? Uh, hidden under many layers. <laughs> Troy Tang at the line, that's good. We're all even. Not for long. Nope. Chen with a smooth stroke from 10 feet out. See, even a game like this, it's, it's not that there's a whole lot of scoring, but this is an exciting game. And there's a whole lot of stake. Uh, well, this, we're talking about a play-in to the quarterfinals. Exactly. Winner gets second spot out of the group. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Sue with a quick drive. She's the most disruptive player for Chinese Taipei, I think. Oh, that, thought that was gonna go. That does not, however. Chinese Taipei will now have the Wilson in hand. It's Chin, excuse me. She got places to go and buckets to get, and she gets one. That gives Chinese Taipei a three-point lead. Singapore trying to answer, they miss. Chin, entry pass to Chang. Good money. Now Chinese Taipei are really, really start to settle in. And imagine if, if the score was flipped. This is what I meant. Imagine if Singapore is leading seven to three. First media timeout. Can you imagine what this crowd would, would be like? Oh, we on it. We on it. Hold on. Oh, 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 hey. Yeah. There you go, man. I think. Oh, oh, man. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> you got your flex on? <laughs> Man, I should have pulled my shirt back so I could show my what I got left of my biceps. I'm not I'm not in the shape that I used to be to pull up the, yeah. the t-shirt. You know, I, I pr I'm probably lacking a few push-ups now, I can't lie. I, uh, I'm not I, proud of my biceps at the moment. I, I'm lacking push-ups, push push downs, push left and right. Just give me give me uh give me two months. Give me two months, I'll be all right. But I give you a nice layup right here for Singapore to close within three. Okay, they closed the gap a little bit, and now they're playing two on three. Well, Suzak back in. Three on three. Sue. Chen needs to get out the paint. Three, she three. surely should have. You knew it. I knew it. The main thing is this. For all of those that listen carefully, it's okay to get position seal in the paint and try to impose your muscle down low but if your teammates don't see you just get out of dodge and try again later oh nice dish yes and it's finished with a scoop Sue covered a lot of distance foul on the shot attempt Singapore's fourth the main problem for Singapore, they haven't been able to, to slow down Chen. Sarah and Sue have been annihilating each other so far. None of them are, have been able to make the difference for their respective teams, but Chen 
is really the X factor in this game for Chinese Tepei. Only a two-point game right now. And if Choi Ting had hit that one, would be even. Substitution made for Singapore. Sarah's out. They go with the more sizable lineup with Jiang. Chin. Down in the paint. Soft touch. Beautiful finish on the left side of the rim. Hung Team Kuo. Chin. You. Feeds it inside, is taken away. Chinese Taipei, back wow, at him. Wow. And another layup. Quiet is kept, but Hung Team Kuo is having a great day. Uh, individually. Dynamic duel with Chen Kuo. And you still have to give credit to Singapore for executing much better. The score is not ran up, but they're playing better overall. They're finding more collaborations. They're moving around better. They're more comfortable, simply. But Chinese Tepei sizing the moment. Seizing. Seizing. Thank you so much. <laughs> I wasn't going to correct you, right? Oh, you should. You should. Anytime I, any, anytime I make a blunder, you need to correct me. Sue? Because you know I will correct you, so. <laughs> well, that's if I ever make a blunder. Yeah, I mean, uh -huh. Uh -huh. like, of course. <laughs> I mean, first of all, you never make mistakes with predictions. No, not ever. Never. Not ever. I think and I was three, three for three, or maybe even four for four yesterday. Yeah, uh, for sure. In your true? mind, of course. Well, the tape will show the truth. I think we both know what that is. <laughs> oh, did you get your team to uh, erase all the data now? <laughs> uh-huh, nine, five. Tell you what, what's not erased right now. It's Chinese Tepei leading by five. Uh, they are the, the more experienced team. But I thought Singapore would Singapore is gonna give them a fight. That's number one. They already are. But you you're talking about girls for Chinese Tepei that have U23 World Cup experience. It translates to coming into the open category with a true understanding of this sport and much more experience than the ladies for Singapore. But you got to start somewhere. And what better way to start than the Asia Cup straight up? Yep, so I participate last year at the uh, Asia Cup. And uh, was it actually, was it so bad? Finished 10th. So the previous edition, they finished 12th. So, when they take that next step, then you're going to see this team, you know, into the quarterfinals as a top eight team. And then from the top eight, you'll see them top five or better. That, you know, it's it's a progression. Right now, they're still kind of stuck in that that tenth range. And uh, if this game stays true to the way it's gone, they, they obviously won't win it and won't be heading to the quarterfinals. Chin. They just haven't been able to slow her down. Chen is too strong, too skilled so far in this game. She's been the main factor for, for Chinese Taipei. Obviously, well helped by Guo, but Chen has been doing the heavy lifting. Chen strokes it easily. A dozen to a half dozen with four to play. Singapore also cannot foul without Giving up two free throws as a result. Jiaying sent away. Su gets it to Chin. Chin. No friendly touch on that one. The great seal position. You can't wait too long. Get up. Oh, that another denial on the inside. She went the wrong way. That's the long arm of the law. Su, fast and furious. Big lead for Chinese Taipei, 13-6. Up fake, Xing Yu to Choi Ting. Desperation heave late in the shot clock. That amounts to nothing. Chin, she's gonna need an accountant soon to keep track of her points. Well, she went to Fast Break City to get an extra point. And up eight now, 14-6. Seems like a, a, a certain amount of ball. 
lead to come back from for Singapore. Well, Chinese Taipei have done a great job of taking taking away a, what could, could have been a big factor, which is the crowd. Right. It's, it's as quiet as a library in here now. Well, probably not quite that quiet, but you get what I mean. It's in comparison to what it could be. The That's energy, what you mean. yes, isn't there. I mean, there's there's a fan section, but look at that. There's one guy standing up clapping. Oh, he hasn't sat down People once. People on his cell phone. No. He hasn't sat down once since the beginning of the day. They've been trying to get some mojo going for Singapore. Get some Singapore slings over there. That's what they need to do. <laughs> uh oh. Sarah slings that one up. Just when you mention it. And she knocks down the shot. So that makes it a three possession game. That's a travel for sure. Players seem to be oblivious to that. And until the referee's whistle starts to make them more aware that they are actually shuffling those feet more than they think at the start of the possession. You gotta like the pass and the foul drawn for Singapore, but they need to put up points on the board right now. Can Sarah do it? Or will she find somebody to do it? Sarah will miss it. And it'll be Chinese Taipei ball with 2.54 left and a 14-8 lead. Well, on the drive. Strong finish. She's been killing this game. Oh, yeah. She's, she's shooting. Shannon Quall just I'd say went to over work. 90% most of her scores layups but she's got her fingerprints all over this game but you're, you're mentioning most of them layups and you're right to mention it but at the end of the day we've seen so many blown layups in this competition so someone with the ability to clean the plate up and maximize opportunities down low that's something that you can you can really really appreciate on. yeah, yeah for sure. appreciate right, that, i get it there's chang this time so it's been a combination of hung ting kuo and yu chai chen doing the damage on the interior and then su you know driving scoring in the lane it's, well, Chinese Taipei, when they play to their potential, they're a really good team. They, yeah. they didn't play to their potential against China, and they didn't look like a very good team. Now it looks like they're playing to their potential. I know they're going against Singapore, who don't have as much experience, but... But uh, you think about it. Sometimes, and it happens even to the really good teams, you just have a bad game. So having a bad game happens even to the best of us. Yes. So the main the main thing that you're looking forward, and you talked about that yesterday, so I got to go back to, to what you mentioned. It's momentum going into the knockout round. Is it the same momentum qualifying or losing the last pool play game than the opposite? Yeah. So that's a good thing for Chinese Tepe going into to, uh, to, to the quarterfinals. To the quarterfinals. Yeah. Thank you for reiterating that point. You just made me sound very, very smart. I made you sound savvy, which you are. See, but I need you to make me sound smart, and you just sound smart by yourself. <laughs> you see? 16-8. Tell you what, oh, Kyle, great hustle. I'll tell you what, you're one of the few guys that can be funny and smart at the same time. Hey, don't make me blush. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't make me blush. What are you going to say to me next? Did you like the sound of my voice? Like a lot of people, I guess. Oh, see? There you go. <laughs> All right. Back to work. <laughs> Buck down is not better than what I'm saying. <laughs> We're in trouble. You better you better not get close to Buck down today. He come. Oh, Buck down had, had the stick ready for us. <laughs> Minute 35, ladies and gents. Game number seven of 12 
on this opening day of the main draw. Chin, no. Sarah out to Jai Ying. Jai Ying sets the screen. Now she'll hand it off to Choi Ting. That's a miss. 70 seconds remaining in this game. Nice drop off, Sue. Man, that speed is real, real. She fast, fast. But the, the English on the glass, when you're at top speed, that's tough to do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, to be able to compose yourself after making a fast move to the rim or a fast break. Yeah. Fifty-six. Nice ball movement out to Sue. Sue, oh, oh. She should have taken that first one, though. She should have. She took us. She paid for it. Looks like she took a shot to the beak. No blood. Yeah, accidental shot though. It came after she uh, she she fell down. Sue fires up a brick. At this point, it won't, doesn't matter. They're gonna get the dub, and that's all they really wanted. Sue misses again. Ball. She preserves the possession. Sue drives right, spins yes. left. Oh. oh no. Sarah. No. Covered on the inside. Ignore that shot clock sound. The only horn you need to focus on is the one that's coming in three seconds. Two, one, uh, there it is. 18, eight, Chinese Taipei secure their spot in the quarterfinals. We will see them the day after tomorrow. And as their, uh, their Asia Cup gold hopes will be alive. The Singaporean ladies are done here day one, but congratulations on coming out and putting forth their best effort. This one was not meant to be here in 2024 for them. So take a look at the highlights of this one. It was not a thriller. It was, uh, it was a game that Chinese Taipei can probably draw some encouragement from. A runaway victory over Singapore. Up next, the fellas take over center stage. We got Pool B action coming your way. Mongolia and Thailand on deck in men's pool B action live here from Singapore. So here's how Pool A ended up shaping out in the women's competition. China beat both Chinese Taipei and Singapore and will represent the one seed out of this group in the quarterfinals. Again, coming up the day after tomorrow, which would be Sunday, yes. So they'll get a day off. Meantime, unfinished business left in the men's bracket. B and D on display today. This is Pool B, Mongolia in the winner's circle. They've only played Sri Lanka. 
So the second game in this group, the defending champions. The country that is, but not the team. Mongolia and Thailand will now take over. So Mongolia come out with Azbayar, Alton, Alton Gurel. I know a non Aryan boat. I just call him the Archer. Benderia, Sandol Guitar, and Tumulin Chingis. Something to look out for a potential upset against Thailand would shuffle the cards and give us a thriller for the last game of the day between Thailand and Sri Lanka. Well, we will we'll see. It was only, it was a narrow win against Sri Lanka. They won that game, I believe, 15 to 13. And you would be correct. And our first look at the Thailand men. Got size. Let's we'll see if it translates. Oh, they, they got plenty of that. They got size and they got muscles. Two players at 204, which would be a, a 6 7 height in English terms. They got some kilos. Yep, 204 would be a 6 7. Really? Yeah, 206 would be 6'8. Yeah. 208 would be 6'9. Yeah. 210 would be 6'10. Yeah. And 212 and above, that's seven footers. Thanks for the clarification. I would not have known. Gain Kim and Tatsuo Nagoshi to officiate this men's action. Coming your way. Kyle Montgomery, aka the voice. Alongside Angelo. Zaka. Oh. <laughs> I did it on purpose. Yeah, you, you, Zagarakis. <laughs> the czar, ladies and gentlemen. You're making your life hard for no reason. <laughs> well, you just insist on me pronouncing the T. Well, which is the correct way to I do it. I know, I know. I got it. I tell you what, they have a lot of kilos in there with the young buck, Emmanuel and Jesus. 118 kilos. Ugh. Does he play tough? Does he play? like his uh, stature we, we, tells it to do. I, we're going to see because uh, That's Jack, true. Rowan, Jack Rowan is a is a treetop too. Not That's, as hefty, but he's taller. That's 260 pounds for your information. 260, okay. Right. It's a large individual. Jack Rowan got a hand on it. You know the Mongolian warriors are going to fight in a contest like this. They draw first blood. Jock Moran muscling his way to the bucket. Doesn't get the score. Aryan Bow, the archer to the cup. Take that with you, big fella. He took it right at those 260 pounds and put him on his bottom parts. Two zip Mongolia. The upcoming free throw for Anand. Aryan Bow left it short. Kicked out to the corner. Good look. No Great man. look, but how can you be that wide open on a free throw? That's my question, Kyle. I got to talk to Steve about that one. Yeah, they, they should know. They should. I'm going to tease him about it. Here comes the Archer. Patiently get into this offensive possession. A lot of ISO. Step back. I'm not sure that's the best. That's the best offensive possession. As good as Aryan Boat is. Seeing a lot of this isolation ball uh, from Mongolia. Even in, even in game one. You know what he's thinking? He's like, Jesus cannot stay in front of me. He's heavy. Well, he's long, though. 
Jason Oak, no. Good push. Two zip. Just scratching the surface as the archer attacks downhill. He blew a tire. Loose ball goes to Thailand. Jacques easy money. Tabulin. Wild shot from him. Lish. Oh, that's kicked. Lish going to the fadeaway. It's not a good look, Kyle. You got to use your speed differently. I always mention if you want to play that one on one, get it off movement, and then you're even more dangerous, you're more unstoppable. But if you're starting up saying, I'm going to size you up and take you, well, you better make sure that your skill set is that impressive that you can get away with it consistently. Yeah, but you gotta you gotta make buckets. But Lish is an interesting player on this team. He's a small guard, and he's the opposite of what you see in the, the other members of the team. He's, he's vertically challenged, but he's but he's got quickness. And craftiness. And craftiness. We, here he goes going to work right here. Can't hit the two. And foul. Substitution is made. Jock Rewine will come in. Lish will get a rest. Most importantly, he wants to uh, allow a better matchup defensively for his team as uh, Mongolia has size. As Bayar setting the screen. Archer, he has not been able to find reception from range so far today. I don't know if he's made a two yet. No, 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 no. I can't recall one. I can't recall either. I mean, the two one came off two ones, I believe. There you go. Jock Rowan, nice bait, uh, spin on the baseline. 2-2 two -two game. They got to communicate better defensively. Thailand allowing the quick slip off the two-man game. And the, the main thing you're looking for in defense, having the big man, Emmanuel Jesu, what do you do? Do you switch or do you have him play drop defense? And what we call drop defense is the guard is left on an island having to go over and fight on his own, and then the big man stays low and protect the paint. But if you do that, then you give a lot of space to operate. Or do you switch? But it can't be kind of in between. It's either one or the other. Yeah, got to commit. Right. I'm playing drop coverage. With big boy? Yes. I would too, truthfully. So a little bit of a slow start for both teams. Thailand's first action here in Singapore. Mongolia coming into this game after a two-point win. Looking for another one to move in. Too strong, he'll get another chance. They hand it over to the archer, Aryan Bull, the only returning member of the gold medal team from one year ago, and he will find the mark that time. From 10 feet out, nice touch there from Anand Aryan Bull. I'm letting you know, Kyle, if the ball gets in my hands before the end of the tournament, I'm shooting it from here. I'm shooting it. Oh, you ain't got to tell me twice. <laughs> shoot or shoot. Shoot or shoot. Do I get a technical foul for this? A technical foul for what? <laughs> for taking a shot in game. <laughs> no. Oh, look. Oh, wait, you can't see that on our camera. Shout out to uh, Noah Lazarus, DJ Lass. They're a dynamic duo too. If we, if we're, uh, if you catch up and I uh, mustard, what are DJ Lass and Noah? Oh, it's a uh, honey mustard and barbecue sauce. <laughs> honey mustard and barbecue sauce. Do people mix those? Well, 
think it can go together. That's a foul. Oh, yes, it yeah. is. It is. Well, you, you, Don't look at the ref like that, buddy. He didn't give him any space to land safely. Zero, none. Even forced Slish to twist his body, not to land on him. So two free throws coming up. Protect shooters. Don't close out too tight. A couple of free throw attempts here for Lish. So if you want a better mix than honey mustard and barbecue, then you got to go with ranch and barbecue. Salt and pepper. I guess. Yeah. Jocko on. Salt and black fella. Yes. What other color is pepper? Well, you have much. You have a uh, gray pepper. <laughs> That's some French stuff. We, all of our pepper is black. Unless you're talking about green pepper, yellow pepper, red pepper. Oh yeah. No, I'm talking about the ground pepper in the. I'm just messing with you. I'm about to throw something. <laughs> Four three. 6:33. See, I'm going to blame the players for this. If they were, if they were balling right now, we wouldn't be over here making bad jokes to each other yeah, and punishing three. the people that are listening. To You're us. right. 4-3 after almost four minutes. Come blame on, guys. Them. Give us a game here. Arian Bo. No, that's definitely a push in the back. Saw it from way over here. Ejesu having some struggles at the start has not been able to impose that size advantage as of yet. Tamulin over to Arianbo. Arianbo got the ISO, trying to do some work. That, that was too predictable. Arianbo probably should have drove there, went to the step back, got nothing, and now he's in the body shot, getting some work done. Jacqueline, China Tip, it's been a, a factor for Thailand in this game. Oh, friendly bounce. He's the only one really efficient. Tough attempt from two range, goes begging to Moulin. Gets in the center of the paint, will miss it. Ball comes back to him. Gotta take it. He'll get a clean shot straight on, top of the key. Nothing but nylon. An offensive foul, blue. And a warning for Arian Bow for behavior. Six fouls on Thailand. They trail about three. Here comes Arian Bow with the Hezzy. Used the pivot, finds it. And had an open attempt underneath. And just wasn't prepared for it. The wind has dropped off completely, so it's a ideal weather right now for shooters to find their groove, but it hasn't been the case so far. Not a whole lot of shooting going on in this game so far, seven to four. There oh, you go. Lish swish. I like reactions when we start talking bad a little. They got a little too handsy there. Lish is going to substitute. It's going to give two free throws to Mongolia. Jai Sanuk is in. Yetamulin will handle the free throws. Knocks down the first. Mongolia's lead at two. Just a little more than uh, halfway, a little less than halfway through this contest. 5.03 officially. Left of this pool B action. Mongolia can seal the top spot out of the pool with a win. Thailand can help make things a little bit more interesting and put themselves in the driver's seat with one game to go against Sri Lanka. Pinderia. Good. So 
Now another warning. The players talking to each other. What's going on, Angelo? I'll tell you what is going on. The experience of uh, Arian Bald trying to switch side on the free throw line to make sure that he would have a better size advantage to, to get his hands involved in the offensive rebound. Oh, this using the Ooh, elevating. What happened there? Did you expect that? Man, he was floating, wasn't he? <laughs> oh! He was floating. He left in seven. Little grasshopper right there. But the grasshopper bit on the fake on, on, on the fake. Lish. Oh, nice idea on the pass. That's the lack of experience though, because you know that in 3x3, you can't just pass it right away, like uh, in 505. Give time to your boy to go, because he's going to be held a little bit initially, so that's going to impact the timing. Understood. Tough shot. And just Sue struggling to get into this game and have an impact. The upcoming matchup between Thailand and uh, Sri Lanka is going to be interesting because you got some meat in the paint for Thailand and they got some size that could be a problem for Sri Lanka. It's going to be the story of two different philosophies. Now we'll see who can come up on top. So far, Mongolia is in the driver's seat and uh, they are in good position to clean the plate up and finish with an undefeated record. But I think Thailand is not showing us their, their best game so far. They haven't found it quite. I think Lish can propose a much better show. I'm actually, I'm, I'm impressed uh, with, with his game. I know he's made some tough plays, but I think that he's got potential to be a game wrecker with his speed and his ability. The size on this Thailand team is tempting too. Oh, they, oh Arian Bo took him to the hole. It's game one though. Nice uh -oh. pass. Lish missed his and just Sue called for a foul. He, he's just pushing every single time to get those rebounds when he doesn't even need to. All he needs to do is use that big booty, <laughs> give a little bump, and that's all. And that's legal. That's legal, <laughs> Kyle. You don't need to do too much. Say it again. I just need the to. big booty. <laughs> use those 260 pounds with your hips, not with your with your hands. <laughs> Seriously. All right. That's some analysis for you. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to keep it as simple as it is. Give a hip bump. Somebody clip that, please. <laughs> Put it on the loop. 13-7. But, you, you're, but you're right. Because that's like the third offensive foul we, on we, him. We called his name more for fouls than for right. points. Right. You know, his, that's Ooh. been his impact. It's a nice move by Arian Bowl. Yeah. I, I like that full work on the guys that make reads on the pick and roll. They're taking the time and making the defense commit. Do you commit to me or do you commit to the dive? And then you can space back out. It's really good. Didn't make the shot though, but at least you know he got that in the bag. But for Mongolia, I, even if they win, end up winning this one, I'm, I'm not so inspired with the way that, that they've won the games. It, I know that all that matters is winning. But I don't know how much confidence you can draw from that head into the quarterfinals, knowing that you, you haven't played your best 3x3. And it's not the strongest pool. Let's be very clear about it. But you still want to be able to clean the plate up as the defending champ, regardless of who you, you got matched up with. That's true. And the, and the more I think about it now is, oh, Lish with the quickness, missed the layup. His foot kind of got stuck in the mud. Maybe you can feel better going into the quarterfinals undefeated, knowing that you haven't played your best ball. You're right. You're right. That's one way to think about it, too. And Lish just putting his defender on the leash. Up six. I like Lish, Lish's activity. Yeah. yeah. Six, point, six point game. And I like his uh, body language as well with his teammates. No nonsense, positive, doesn't get worked up when he misses some. And that's a, always a good sign from one of your main, main players. 
Rosario Bow in another ISO situation. And the Archer did not find the mark at all. Whoa. Whoa. Uh-uh. Six-point game. Make that a seven-point game as Mongolia's extended 15 to 8. He could have used those long arms to just bang on people. Jesu will now let it fly from the corner. Not happening for him either. Arya Bone is trying to set up a play to Mullen. He's confused. He says, forget it. I'm just going to shoot. But Thailand is out of sync right now. The big boys are shooting up when they're supposed to get their butts in the paint. See? And that's the third brick in a row. Man, man, it, has been, it has been a struggle for Thailand, to say the least. Asbayar has it poked away. Thailand with nine fouls, too. It's, it's a long shot. 2.05 to go. Seven point game. Aryan Bow with another brick. Oh. See you later. Oh, delicious. Lish with the move and the, and the groove. Aryan Bow, he got a little bit of that, too. There you go, a little bit of collaboration. Good hand by Leash. Take it. Oh ho! Leash unleashing the dragon right now. 16 11, Thailand within five. It's going to be a little bit too late. Unfortunately for them. Thank you for taking over while I took a bite of my food. I had to get a bite. But you're right. Leash is hooping. He's been a long bright spot for uh, for Thailand. When, when you're looking at the way this team is built, they have a solid construction. It's not like they don't have tools that they can use, but they're just not doing it at the same time. Jesu with the move. That's fine. I'm, when you're that tall, I want to see a dunk every time. And I also want to see you down low first, then extend. Aryan Bow. Oh, hey. put that back. He likes things a certain way. And Thailand woke up too late, Kyle. They woke up too late to make this a real game. As Bayar, it'll most certainly be out of reach now. This is blocked. Going for 22. Bold, no, but only five seconds left. They shall so and no. It'll be a 20 to 14 official final. So Mongolia are able to step up their game, had a better offensive performance this time around, and there was never any question who the better team between the two was in this 10 minute sprint. It was the defending. Asia Cup champions, Mongolia, who prevail, go 2-0, and oh, and will go into the quarterfinals with confidence and unfazed. It's good to see Thailand make a, li make a little bit of a game of it at the end there, but this one was never in question. Next up on the schedule, we got New Zealand and Qatar. Pool D action. And two more games following that. Malaysia and the Philippines. Women's competition followed by Thailand and Sri Lanka. Pools B and D will be decided. As well as A and C for the women. Stick around. New Zealand, Qatar coming your way in just a moment. From here in Singapore.
Top seed. It's going to be New Zealand. Is it going to be Qatar? It's going to be interesting. By the way, thanks to Kyle Montgomery, I learned the actual right pronunciation of Qatar. I'm used to say Qatar because that's how we say it on my side of the pond. But the man has traveled the world way more than I did. So it's Qatar. And I will say the way they say it at home. New Zealand. In the driver's seat, obviously, the more physical team, the more accomplished team as well. But Kutta is going to have an opportunity to try to shock everybody. New Zealand and Malaysia offered us a thriller to start off the day. In overtime, 21-19, New Zealand escaped an upset. And then Kutup took care of business, but escaped as well. Malaysia, a team that could have finished top of the group, ends up leaving early, losing both games by one. And now the two victorious opponents meeting up. Who do you like better? the power and strength in the paint of Winyard or Kelman Poto. Do you like the young buck, Mohamed Abashir, to go challenge them? He was spectacular in his first game against Malaysia. He was the reason why Kutter managed to escape the Malaysians. But you have also Sahad that has the outside shooting touch, the grind, the aggressiveness. I like this matchup. I'm looking forward to see what's going on. Who will finish top of the group, knowing both teams already qualified into the knockout round? Well, matchups are everything. And you usually prefer to have the number one seed coming out of the group, then number two. So expect these two teams to play as if this is a, a playing game. The intensity should be high as McCullough will start with the rock, cruises in for the lay. Both teams, as Angelo just mentioned, are qualified to the quarterfinals regardless. This is simply for the top seed out of Pool D. McCullough, in and out, finds some space, lets it fly. The stroke wasn't stroking. The Dom, the Dom, cannot make the layup. Now he defends Abuisa, Abuisa, excuse me. He's on the bench. That's Mohammed with the rock. We know that Group D is going to cross path with uh, Pool B. And it's going to be interesting because those two teams coming out of Pool B may very well go to the next round after their quarterfinal matchups. Because Mongolia, Thailand, and Sri Lanka are teams that could get beat by either one of those teams at any time. Absolutely. Regardless of the seeding and the order. That's a good point. We're gonna we'll know for sure in the, in the next three games. As Nico McCullough receives the package, delivers. When you with the setup. Saad with the up fake steps in past McIntosh and gets Cutter on the board. Some beautiful footwork and great composure. 
McCullough with the strong drive left. Mishandled it. Got it back. He's got McIntosh in the corner. Wait a minute. He steps on the sideline. Should have been a double dribble, Kyle, because he did try to pick it up with both hands. He did. Didn't he? he did. That was, a, that was a double dribble, in fact. But I don't think either official had the angle to see it. But we were so close to it, we saw it. Got away with one. As we get back to it, with Sa'ad turning the corner. He's got Kelvin Poto in front of him. He decides to give it up to Mohammed. Mohammed is firing long. McCullough cross court to McIntosh. McIntosh too strong. Now it's McCullough's turn. Neither one of them stroke is stroking. I don't like that choice by McCullough at all. And Kelvin Poto is frustrated as he should be. He had size advantage for about an hour, and no one is looking to give him the ball inside. I would be hot as a big man, and he let McCullough know it. McCullough is aggressive, and I love it. And you know I was a scorer, Kyle, so I'm all for that, and you need to in 3x3. But at least you tried it once, you tried it twice. You see the big man posting up. Just give the big man the rock. Yeah, it's all about exploiting the mismatches. You're right. And you aren't always the mismatch, no matter what you think in your own head. That is true. <laughs> Somebody just got a warning. And that's New Zealand. Lisa misses the free throw. No problem, though, because Cutter still have the Wilson. Mohammed elevates, and he drops that in. He had the size advantage on McCullough. And he used Typhoon it. to the crib, lays it in. Typhoon suits him so well. Oh, Brisa, nice fake to set up the drive, but five step finish. He blew the crib. <laughs> Surely did. He blew the crib. McCullough, he converts his, it makes it a 4 2 game. And McCullough fighting for the rebound. They'll earn the whistle. Blew the crib like left eye. <laughs> <laughs> that, put those, put those well, guys the reference. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Uh, when you, by the way. See, there's a lot that'll go over a lot of people's heads. I know. That, it's okay though. For you, it didn't. That was top shelf. That thank was top you, shelf. Thank you, thank you. Saad did the exact same thing. So left eye is hot today. Anyhow, long range. Ooh. Oh, Macintosh. McIntosh, uh oh, wait a minute. He had him dazed and confused. Yeah, but too that flat. Move. Too flat. Shooting, uh, shooting trajectory. So, warning for each side. So each team have a warning for behavior. Right. Just so we, just we're all, all in the same accord here. We reach a media timeout, been in the tense game. And I think they match up relatively evenly. You look at the guards in McIntosh and Sa'ad. Yeah, because Mohammed uh, can take advantage of McIntosh and, uh, and McCullough anytime he has preferential position nearby the paint. So can um, Abashir. And on the other side, you just got a 2.0 version of that mismatch with uh, Kelman Poto and, um, and Winyard. Color. Can somebody give Kelman Poto the ball in the paint one time? McIntosh, well, why not? McIntosh, I think, made the right decision. Well, you have multiple options. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Good moves, but just not, not enough trajectory on both shots for Saad. There you go, but not the good well, pick this time. That. Well, that's, that's a risky pass in that scenario. And it's not the good choice because it's Abashir guarding him. So it's like, makes you have to be perfect on that pass. Biggest player in a Qatar uniform as Chris McIntosh is starting to cook. He's starting to cook, it's 10-2. I think he's more than started. He's like literally sweating in the kitchen. Well, I, think he, I think he hit the two in overtime yep. to win it for him. There you go. Oh, Wainier turns the corner. And this game is turning into a blowout. Saad swings it. Abuisa pulls the trigger. I know how New Zealand is. The tall blacks 
Once that confidence gets flowing, oh, it's gonna get, it's gonna go from bad to worse for you. You got the highlight of the game. Beautiful behind the back pass in traffic. A little bit lucky to go past the hands of Babasher. But I tell you what, the end result is pretty. And you got the free throw to go with it. You know what I told somebody one day? Tell I said me. 3x3 is an extreme sport. Oh, it, and they it like, surely is. If you play the game, you see how the, the demand that it makes on, on the human body. <laughs> These are, you know, many of these athletes are young in top physical condition, and by the end of this 10 minute sprint, they can hardly breathe, hardly stand up. It's extreme. There you go. Thank you, sir. McCall it. Identifying the mismatch for the first time in this game, and Kelman Poto can have a little bit of food. Oh, how about Cher? Nice move, but a shot, obviously. No good. You can clear. When you're now it's clear. Accidentally. Up fake McCullough. Stop it. Stop it. It's ridiculous. 16 to 2. That's one, just mean. One-legged deuce from McCullough. That's just mean. Kelman Poto needs to watch out because he, does, he doesn't clear the ball. Oh, hesitation. McCullough with the dish, and Winyard will finish it all. 17-3. This is David versus Goliath. Look again at Nick the Quick dropping it off to Ty Winyard with the easy flush. This is just, doesn't it give you flashbacks of Malaysia against uh, India? Yes. And in terms of it being uh, this type of a blowout. Like a bit down, it's a one-way street. There's no debating who's going to town, nothing. It's just, that it's not done the same way Malaysia did it with the outside. Well, actually, McIntosh is doing it the way Malaysia did it to India, but he's just, I was expecting and hoping a better battle than this. Uh, I think we all were. I, I, if you told me that, that Cutter would have three points after over five minutes of play, I think most people would have a hard time believing that. But I think that all the credit is due for New Zealand. The tall blacks are beating them black and blue. And they have, Winyard's had a good game, but it's been McIntosh that set the tone. Oh, and, and, Nick, and Nico McCullough, he's in his bag like fast food. He misses that one. Saad with the hezzy, floaty, no. But McCullough, the guards have really led the charge for, for uh, New Zealand in this one. And I think actually the guards are always going to be the X factor for New Zealand because teams expect Ty Winyard to be dominant. Look at this. He is showing out like he's got company over. <laughs> Nico McCullough keying this 18 to 3 uh, lead. So let me show you that painting by Renoir. <laughs> <laughs> you, you didn't, when you were young, you had company over, all of a sudden you talk a little bit more slick in front of your parents. You know, right, right. Hey, what's, 15 point game. And I bought this drapes on my trip too. <laughs> there oh, you go. Macintosh, money, money Macintosh. You know what New Zealand is doing? What's that? They are giving you an opportunity to have a longer break so you can get some food. That's what they're doing. Thank you. This is a choice performance from the Tall Blacks. You wouldn't know that lingo because my New Zealand friends gave me that lingo. This is choice, bro. What this is, is choice, bro. That means very good. It's choice. It's choice. Yes. All right. Well, I, have, I have some more. I'll I'll, uh, I'll bring it out. Well, keep it keep it for the main the knockout round. Yes, I will. 
Game point for New Zealand. Abasher. It's going, going, gone. Off the glass, the Macintosh, why not? He's been cooking anyway. All net, all wet. Wow. They drowned him in a sea of twos. And the ladies are happy. The guard play outstanding for the Tall Blacks. The bigs played well as well. But Chris McIntosh and Nico McCullough. The big guns for the Tall Blacks. They happen to be the smallest dudes on the team. But a huge effort as New Zealand go 2-0. They are the class of the group with a choice performance. Big win over Cutter, who will also be going to the quarterfinals. Let's get it over to the Czar, who's standing by with Ty Winyu. All right, Ty, you look tired. I don't understand, man. You made it look so easy. 22-3, what's going on? Uh, we just shot the ball well tonight, followed our plan, and we just got to keep, keep getting better, keep growing as a team, man. Yeah. I mean, looking at New Zealand, we call you the Tall Blacks, and the main thing is, I don't really see a weakness on that squad. You guys are coming for gold, am I right? Yeah, we're, we're a great team, we gel well together, and we're just still tweaking a little bit, but we'll get there, and yeah, happy with our performance tonight. All right, good luck to you for the rest. All right, so, uh, so that, that pool has been decided. Pool D is done. Two more games left. That's women's uh, pool C action between Malaysia and the Philippines, and men's pool B action between Thailand between yeah Thailand and Sri Lanka. Eventually, I'm gonna get this right. <laughs> but those two are left. You also have some highlights to enjoy. I'm gonna step aside, get a sip of water, and, and try to get my words together, and then we'll get ready to put a button on the day with our final two games. So appreciate y'all for sticking with us this far. We still got a little bit more to go. Stick around. Here's the way Pool C looks in the women's competition. Philippines 
with a beautiful opening performance. Now they just need to put a cherry on top against Malaysia to seal the number one spot out of the group. They are the favorites in this one. We hope to see a better performance out of Malaysia uh, this time around after only managing four points against Mongolia earlier. Uh, was not the best. It was not the best. We'll see how they do this time. Out they come. Malaysia representing. For the Philippines, though, it'll be important to to see what their mentality will be, although I, I don't think that it'll differ from the first time we saw them. They always stay in kill mode, so I think Malaysia will have to really be able to match that intensity that we see from the Philippines to give themselves a chance in this game. They're playing with three players, well, no, four players. And look, it was, just took a while for that fourth player to come out, Angelo. <laughs> she they, faked you out, man. They tricked me for a second. They tricked you. They got a full squad. And they need to be full steam ahead if they hope to make a game out of this. I don't think there's a lot of teams that want to play the, the Philippines right now in the way that they are playing. Well, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I, I'm calling it before the game even started. It, it's about to be a landslide. You think this is going to be a landslide? Yeah. Yeah, I think the momentum for the ladies from Philippines is just... It's just going to be too much for Malaysia, and they have great chemistry. The main thing I'm looking for, though, I think Cacho should rest it out a little bit, like stay on the side more than she plays. Oh, I don't think we'll see that. It, I, I, know we, I know we are not going to see that, but that's what I would advise. It's certain players that don't know how to turn it down. They, they play at the same level all the time. It's just all they know. So uh, we'll see about as a coach, because you are a coach, yeah. that's exactly how you should be thinking. You're saying, listen, <laughs> yeah, take yeah. it easy. We're going to the quarterfinals. Don't, nobody get hurt out here. Don't, you know, conserve some energy. I get it. But Kacho's a ball player. <laughs> oh, man, like, th that's a battle that I've had to have with my own coaches. I played with torn uh, abdomen muscles. I played with... Uh, uh, Herniated disc. I've played with all kinds of injuries. Uh, strain, like most um, calf strains, all you can think of. But at the end of the day, it's still going to be that struggle. Like it's, it's a negotiation. It's management. You're you're always trying to do your best as a coach to prevent the worst case scenarios from happening. But you can also not really cut the rhythm and the, yes. the, the grass under the, your player's feet, and it's, it's tough. As a coach, you also understand being a competitor. Right. So, right. I think the best coaches are, are coaches who actually play at a high level. Yeah, too. I mean, there is a case that, that proves it. It's not, uh, like, reserved strictly to high-level players, because you you think of a guy like Eric Spolstra for the Miami Heat. Yep, that's a great, a, example. A great example. Amazing coach, but he worked his way up. He's a true student of the game, a brilliant mind uh, of the game, but he never was a high-level player. So you can be that kind of coach, but if you think of Phil Jackson, he was an NBA champ, wasn't he? Yeah. Okay, so. But Phil Jackson also was a player. Cacho doing exactly what she does. Cacho gets him started. Oh, Cacho, back to back. She's got two buckets in 10 seconds. Well, Pengo going back. She's probably going to be the, the, the best thief of the competition. She's, she's had so many steals so far. I like the makeup of the Philippines. I think the only time they're going to run to, into trouble is that they meet a, meet a team that's versatile, not only with size, but also some quickness. And a team that will respond the call with the intensity that they're going to bring. Right. But as of right now, I think it's smooth sailing for them. Speaking of smooth sailing, how about that drive straight to the cup from Chai Yi? There's Bill Claren, long hair, don't care. So you, Cacho, Cacho is now moving like, you see, like she's kind of limping. You see that knee right there, Kyle? And I don't like that. She's okay. limping. She, she, that would have been a layup had it been the qualifying draw. With the speed, she'll just dive to the cup. Right now, she has a slow first step, and she's kind of limping around, so. Yeah, they should probably limit her play. That's there right. you go. Yeah. There you go. That's what I was mentioning. Like, just kind of like, eh, stay more on the side than the actual minutes you play. Jai Yi. 
going to lose the handle on it. Don't know if, uh, if Pinko got a hand on that or not. Now it's going to be uh, given to, uh, to the Philippines. She mishandled that dribble. And for Malaysia, it, it, it's a tough matchup. It's a real tough matchup, but they need uh, Chai Yi to, uh, to get it going, to keep driving with, uh, with intention, to be aggressive. And go. Driving with intention and driving with speed. I think Pinko needs a ticket. She's just too fast with that first step. You know what's good for the Philippines? They're going to have one day off tomorrow. And that's something critical for Cacho's knee at this moment. A deserved day off. Remember, this team, they're playing fresh, but they played in the qualifying draw. We covered this team for two days already. Camille Claren. Oh, wow. She crossed her and didn't even look both ways. It's a three-point advantage for the Philippines. Moving screen. Kylie putting too much on it. Back to where we go. Josen will open the possession. Oh, yes. Oh, I love that oh, action. Oh, yes. Wasn't that beautiful action? Oh, oh, man. That's another clip right here that we could break down. That double screen and then slip was. You know how we call it the snake action. Whoever sets the initial screens will use a screen given to the one that just used it. It's kind of like the snake rolling around your arm kind of thing. Beautiful action. Right. We've seen that so many times with the best Serbian teams, and now the Philippines just make their own. Well, they set the blueprint. And For sure. A lot of teams, a lot of countries are picking up on it and utilizing it. Claren sets the screen and then sets her sights on the two, misses it, but tracks it down. Pinkle is in there Man. fighting for the rebound. What hustle. Jab step, Chai doesn't really use the screen. He's running late in the shot clock, straight on two. Now out, and get it reset. It's Kate Wee. She gives it up. And the Philippines, they know what to do with it. They put the cookie in the cup. Adila chucks the deuces. No, ma'am. Claren over to Pinkle. Pinkle over to Joseph. So Claren could, could not help it. She got pushed a little bit in the back, and then her momentum was just too strong. She could not control. The, the impact, so happens a lot. So, many times in 3x3, the initiator is not the one that's going to be punished. It's whoever reacts or whoever ends up on the, the end of the wave. Four point lead for the Philippines. Final game in Pool C in the women's competition. Chai Yi is going to heat one up. Claren lets it go. That one's gonna ricochet off the iron. Is that Cacho? That's Cacho, see? She won't stop. <laughs> she won't stop. That's Cacho. She is an absolute warrior. Six two as we head, head to our first media timeout. You can see the hustle from Cacho is fighting for every ball. How are you feeling, man? Huh? How are you feeling? Great. Third day, almost over. Great. Great vibes. You know what? If you love your job, it's not it's not really work. You're right. You know, I'm, I'm as, as excited as the players are for the tournament to start. I can't wait. So I'm having a good time. And so am I. And that's a nice execution right there. Using the back screen to free up a dive towards the cup. After that, you need to make a good pass, obviously. But Malaysia needs to duplicate, replicate times infinite if they want to have a chance to upset the Philippines. Pinko 
with the quickness. Oh, nice defense after the spin move. Ingram playing some pressure defense. And Malaysia are going to waste the possession and throw it away. McLaren will substitute out for the moment. Concho, Joseph, and Pinkel doing the honors themselves. Yosin has been discreet with the outside shooting so far. She's been patient. Tough shot attempt there. Nice, nice, nice. And Kylie. Pinko with a quick response. She answers right back like a belligerent teenager. <laughs> Three-point lead, Philippines. You like that one? I did. <laughs> I did. Big go. Great pass. Oh! oh gotcha. Blunder. Opa. Step back. Oh, no. See what, see what, see what had happened was... Well, what ha ha happened see, was uh, I used my right hand on the left hand side. That's what happened, Kyle. I had wiped some sweat off from my uh, knee, and uh, and then I used my right hand on the left hand side. Yeah, I was shooting with my left thumb. <laughs> left thumb. <laughs> uh huh. Oh man. <laughs> Seriously, like that. I mean, it's not me being a purist. It's me being an, a, an educator. Like, work on your skill set around the hoop. When you're on the right hand, on the right side, use your right hand. When you're on the left side, use your left hand. There's no negotiation about that. Just do it. Tell him, coach. Thank you, sir. Oh, oh Jazzy nice. Joe. Jazzy Joe. Eight four. Just over five minutes to play. Philippines with only a four-point lead, but. This game feels like they got it in control. They do, they do. It, it, it's just the truth. Has Yosin uh, attempted a, a two-point shot yet? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I, I can't recall. Oh, good defense. Had the right idea on the pass, but not the execution. Yosin. Yes. To Claren. Pinko in and draws the foul. That's a shooting foul, the fourth on Malaysia. You know, you know what they're executing on their transition? And that actually would uh, would be a, a little shout out to our supervisor, Adin. That's literally like the typical um, uh, Piran old school uh, reverse the ball, come from the outside, fake the back screen and flash straight to the middle without screening. And they're doing it repetitively and successfully. They're putting in the, they're putting in the time to learn the, the intricacies of the game, the small things that make a big difference in the end. You know, you know how much practice it takes to learn these actions and know when to utilize them. As a re re reminder, there are no coaching. There are no coaches during the game. You're right. You got to be on automatic pilot. That's the first two-point shot attempt, and it was not the one she wanted to take, but she had no choice. With the shot clock winding down. And the thing also, that kind of action on the transition is very useful, Kyle, when you have, like, girls that can be in interchangeable. When yes. You, you see, it's like everybody can cut, everybody can run, everybody can fake. Oh, narrow miss there from K. Hui. CC. Nice. Oh, Sees the rim. Beelines to it. Uncontested. Makes it a 9-4 game. Adila. Oh, that's great defense. You see Pinkle go straight up. Claren wants to drive again. That's a look. Now it's Jazzy Joe. Let there you go. go. You already know. 11-7 <laughs> after that two-piece. Now it's stolen away. If you don't know what to do with it, we'll show you. Oh, Pinko, what? See what see what had happened. <laughs> see what had happened was I. Anyway. 
look back at some of the work that's been done. Did you see that layup that you missed it on the replay? Yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying like, to listen to it the It was like Pickle song. was flying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Arms were swaying. I don't think I've seen a layup like that before. Three forty-five left in this last ladies' contest of the day. It's the Czar and the Voice. Day one of the main draw, day three of the competition. That was a sweet move right there. Giving her the Hakeem shake, the dream one. Oh, yes, yes, no. <laughs> Joseph makes good on the second attempt. And the lead continues to swell like a beer belly. It's up to seven. That's actually down to six now. Angelo's up here laughing, all right? It's a success if I can get him giggling about something. He thought about a beer belly when I said that. Oh, man. You got me giggling all tournament long. You should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> Jazzy Joe. Iso Ooh. old crossover. Oh, she took her on a drive. That was like a test drive. No look pass. Oh, Fast no break look. city. Dime delivery. Philippines delivering a 14 to 6 advantage with 2.34 to go. I like the energy on that team. I like the, the interaction with the teammates. Whenever somebody does something good, they're, they're supportive. When somebody misses something, they're not critical, they're not negative. That's a big part of, of having team chemistry. And I heard, I heard Camille mention that in an interview that you guys had. She was right. talking about the chemistry on, the, on this team. And, and it shows. It shows. You can it's see contagious. it very clearly. Yeah. Too easy. Not easy enough. The drive was easy, but the recovery needs to be noticed. So great recovery defensively by Kylie. All right, back to work we go. Malaysia with a whole lot of work to do if they want to make this competitive at all. Chai Yi with the stop and go, missed it to the corner. Pinkle thought about it. Claren will swing it over. Cacho certainly fouled there. That is the fifth. You can see how exhausted these players are. You see Claren coming to the pit to get a breather. The qualifying She's draw, just man. She's literally can hardly walk. Yes. Oh, what a dish. That's a five star. Get your Michelin on. Oh, oh, oh. Wide open look. Cacho runs into traffic. Yes. Oh, they share it like a good meme. 16 to 8. Everybody's touching the Wilson. Philippines putting on an absolute show again. But look at this dime again. Sharon is Karen. I think that was actually Claren that did the Sharon, wasn't it? <laughs> Wasn't that clear? It was. <laughs> you could say. Sharon is clearing. That would work. That right, would give work. Me, give me that back then, live. Let's let's redo it. <laughs> Man, what a dime from Clarence. And then you say, hey, sharing is clearing. <laughs> Last minute, Larry swings it. Stop and go, spin move. 
Jazzy Joe. Uh-uh. Under a minute to play. Philippines continue to pass. Jazzy Joe to the corner. Pinko. Not that time. Okay. That's a foul. That's a foul. Initially it was a block, but it ended up being a foul. Tough angle, but no incidents on the game after 29 seconds. Maybe I'm wrong. I need to see the replay on that block. Eventually we'll have it, I believe. Shy. Wait a minute, they took too much time. Five. Shot clock violation. Again, it does not matter. So time out. Maybe an opportunity to get that block to see. Well, it doesn't matter. Well, just block or not. Right. Right? Game's over. So 16-8, do you call that a landslide or? Yes, uh, and, and I'm glad you said that because if you remember at the beginning of the broadcast, I think I, before we even started to play, I said, I think this is gonna be a landslide. And uh, you can check the tape if you want. <laughs> <laughs> but I distinctly remember saying that this one I think is gonna be a landslide. You, you know, right, that I'm, I, go I'm gonna clip all of them out, all of them out and send them to you. I remember, I remember you saying something like, oh, I don't know, we'll see. But I remember I, I said for sure, this is gonna be a landslide. I was confident enough to say that on a live broadcast. Meantime, Mr. Joseph getting in for the score, 17-8. And that oh, counts. That will count. 17-10, Malaysia leaving with honors. They competed. Philippines remain unbeaten. They haven't lost a game yet here in Singapore. Five and zero. Oh. Not a game yet. The Gilas getting the Actually, job done. Isn't it four and zero? Oh? They played two games in the qualifiers. I'll have to look back. I know they beat Tahiti. I know they beat Maldives. I know that they beat Mongolia. And now they just beat Malaysia. Yeah. They the, the women's the women's qualifying draw was only three teams, wasn't it? I got I gotta check that. Why am I bugging? You check it out. And I check it you out. You check that out. And we'll check up the highlights and and then we'll get ready for the final game of the day. Thailand, Sri Lanka, men, pool B on deck from Singapore. Don't you go nowhere. We got one more 10 minutes print to go.
Well, out comes Thailand again. Now, they had a pedestrian performance their first time out in losing to Mongolia. Now they'll get a shot against Sri Lanka. The winner of this game will have a chance at the quarterfinals. Not a chance, a spot in the quarterfinals. Mongolia, the class of the group, as they go 2-0. Who wants to still be playing on Sunday? We'll find out in the next 10 minutes. Sri Lanka all the way from the qualifying draw. They're being pushed to their limits. But in order to win a medal in an event like this, you gotta be willing to empty the tank completely. We'll see how much they have left as they come out in their Seattle Seahawks basketball uniforms. I like these. I think I said that before, but I like you mentioned I it. I like the jerseys. Man. So the Seahawks is your team? No, no, the Ch Kansas City Chiefs are my team. Well, and and no, choice. it's not just because we, we've been winning Super Bowls. It's because I'm from Kansas City, and I've been a Chiefs fan for over 35 years. So starting your fifth year on this earth, you started liking. I those. remember watching the Chiefs games as a five-year-old with my dad, with my Chiefs helmet. <laughs> we, we went through a lot of tough years, I'm telling you. So the, you did. the Super Bowls we winning now, we deserve it if you've been a Chiefs fan as long as I have. For sure. Eddie Lou and Simpo, they will officiate this last game of the day. And it has implications. Second spot in the group, out of the group, into the quarterfinals. As Those, half, uh, half the quarters will be set. Right. Those uh, Thailand white jerseys, they're pretty good looking too, man. Oh, yeah, no, I'm not. I like it. No, I'm, I'm not saying that it, uh, it's a knock on the others. I'm just saying that I also like those. Nice. Yeah, they're good. They're... Little stripes and everything. Sri Lanka's just stand out to me, though. Well, I mean. I'm a, I'm a fashion guy, too. You know, I got a little swag, a little bit. You know oh, you did, did, you, you did we do the post for the Jays today or not? I didn't, I, didn't post the, I didn't post the Jays yet today, but you know what? I might. Well, they're worthy of a post. And they would go well with that Sri Lanka jersey, by the way. Oh, yeah, you know, you're right. I'm, am, I, am I now worthy of a fashionista uh, mansion? Yeah, yeah, let me check you out. Well, mine is just after Tukumpo's, okay. man. Okay, you got the after Tukumpo's on. Yeah, I got the shoes that anytime you can call up on my number and I, I'm ready to go play on the court. They're, they look comfy. That's they are. That matters. I, I go for comfort. Well, I, look, I like that guard matchup between uh, Pawan and Lish. Yes, it's going to be interesting. It's all about speed That's, and grit. Oh, quick on quick. <laughs> Jason up, chunks it up, misses it. The sun breaks, the, breaks things up on the inside. He ends up with the Wilson. Rook Sean, nothing happened in that time. You know what I'm thinking about, Kyle, is um, the fact that Sri Lanka had to wait the whole day to get back on the court. And that's not easy, easy stuff. So you're playing early, and then you got the whole day then you got to get ready again. Yeah, try to heat back up. Right. Roxanne. Oh, he blew it. He sold the clip. There you go, basketball IQ right there. Giving the big man the ball down low with the size and, and uh, weight advantage. I expect him to be more dominant, though. He's so huge. If he can just add some aggression to his game, I think he could be a dominant player. Jesu, meantime, is going to check in. Hopefully, he's put his, his fouling days behind him. Here's Lish. Pull up. Oh. Um, take that with you, Pawan. Payao. Plus four, Thailand of a 
Nice start. Looking a lot better than they did in <laughs> game one. Yeah, they started playing pretty good too late. That's pretty much what happened. Get that out of here. Josh Inouye was not in the mood. I don't like what I'm seeing right now from Sri Lanka trying to go for the one-on-one -on -one ball. They have good individual talent. They just don't set it up for oh, success. Taiwan, Payal from the logo. There you go. Drop the size. The layup. I like to see the big man duck that. Come on, big man. <laughs> And the turnover going for the one-on-one -on -one again. Drives it up, feeds it inside, and Jesu is able to draw the foul. Just don't get me wrong, that, that, hey, the Pawam Gamaji 2 is an individual exploit. It's yes. a tough shot. It's like, okay, you got talent, great, but you're setting yourself up for tough moments if you're only counting on those kind of shots for you to win this game. I can dig it. And, I, and I'm telling you, like, I was really seduced by what I saw from Sri Lanka early in the qualifier, but the ball was moving around much more. They collaborated more, and they're ending up just playing one-on-one -on -one right now. Blocking foul call. Zlish found it difficult keeping up with Pawan. Well, you love that matchup, don't I you? I do like that matchup. That's the one I'm keeping an eye on for the duration of this game with eight minutes left. Simran. Goes to the crossover. He got himself locked up. Dribble, dribble, dribble. See the ball go out of bounds. Move it, play together, then attack the big man off the closeouts as you can and should. Yep, too much iso ball. Too much iso ball. Now look, they got Simron down low guarding Ajesu, and they don't even get the ball down. Uh, <laughs> they may be eat my own words, but Jock Rawan knocks down the two. He's the man with the most international experience for Thailand. The other ones didn't have any caps before this event. Oh, the sun. The sun's a uh -oh. player. Uh-oh. Lish. Swish. Oh, yes. Swish alicious. I mean, I was calling it out. I'm telling you, he's been spectacular individually. Swish alicious. I like what 10 you did. 10-4. <laughs> I like what you did there. He kind of. I, maybe it's the braids, but doesn't he have a little bit of AI I to mean, him? I, I, is it just the braids? Is it braids and the tattoos? I don't know. He's kind of bouncy. AI was bouncy when he was young. People don't remember. AI was dunking on people. I mean, who, who doesn't remember? Well, who? Nah, nah, young I'm saying, people don't. Well, young people that don't know about history of the game because Allen Iverson it's like the freakish athlete that you can think of. I, I put him in the same category as Nate Robinson. Oh, don't you disrespect AI like that? No, no, no. Uh, listen, listen to me. Listen to me. Are you kidding me? They were both football players. Okay. I, for that. That's what I mean. Yes. They were freak athletes. Yes. How can I disrespect him talking about Nate Robinson when he won the dunk contest as like yeah. under six feet? I'm, I'm actually giving them the biggest props you could give any short guys. Nate Robinson would be very pleased to hear that comparison. Oh, uh, only, I only got love for Nate, but I almost I almost became a teammate of Nate in college, just so you know. But uh, yeah, 12-4, Thailand, off to a great start. Whoa, yeah. This game's gotten out of hand a little bit. With eight point, Sri Lanka starting to run out of steam, maybe? Well, the style of play that shows doesn't help. Oh, Jason. Uh, Drive and kick. Ajetsu makes the move, and you better move out the way. Or That's maybe a foul. not. Foul. That's just, a... just to finish up that chapter, all those youngsters that are listening to us, because AI is literally 3x3 built. His game was 3x3. Oh, could you imagine? Oh my God. And in high school, the man, and he did it also at the rookie game in the NBA, he dunked it off the free throw. He yes. came out of the free throw, a missed free throw, and he came out of nowhere and just yammed on everybody. And he's shorter than anybody here. He's, Lish is barely taller than him. Yeah, yeah, I think it was like six foot, six one. Barely. With with shoes on. Could single-handedly win a game for you. 
By the way, he has the highest point per game average in the history of the game for a guard outside of Michael Jordan. What do you average, 30? Th th for a career-wise, 27. Oh, 27. Yeah. Jordan was at 30, and AI was at 27. Like, people don't understand. I I'm closing down this stuff because I'm going to get upset at all of y'all. Ajesu <laughs> <laughs> misses the free throw, but, he, but it was a lane violation. So he's going to get another attempt. And how much trouble is Sri Lanka right now, Kai? Oh, Sri Lanka's in a lot of trouble. I, I don't I don't see him erasing this deficit. Even with a Jesu missing that free throw. And even though they've shown a lot of grit and toughness in the qualifying draw, they were down eight points. Yeah. Against uh, Korea. Against Korea. Right. And came all the way back to win that game. But they were fresher. And that's what I'm saying. They were fresher then. Oh. But I'm, I'm gonna have some strong words. I think they're losing their identity. They forgot what made them successful in the qualifying draw. Everybody was participating to the team effort in a way of um, attacking, being aggressive off catches, but they didn't start off with one-on-one. -on -one. They were moving the ball around and then getting it done. Yeah, you look right there. It's a perfect example of what you just said. Pawan, quick pull up two in the shot clock. Oh, yes. oh he got some extra sauce. You got some extra sauce. We see you, Lish. Freakalish. Freakalish. <laughs> you ain't talking about my guy from Miami, are you? <laughs> Petey Pablo? No. Oh, is that Freakalish? <laughs> <That one. laughs> the sun there to the go. rim. 35. There you go. Identifying mismatch. Ajesu having a much better game now. He's active. Luke Sun not happening. Lish, no. Here's Lish. He'll miss that one. Back to back. Two's missed. Pawan up fake. Clean look at a two. And it lands in Lish's hands clean. Nice. He's going to drop that off. Big fella, Jesu rewarded for his off the ball activity. That's the way it's supposed to go. Ten point contest. The sun. Oh. He, he cleans up his own mess. Just over five to play. Lish gets it back. Iso. Down low. Ball stolen. What's bad pass though? Too low. Oh, son. Man, that's like three or three straight air balls from out a long range for Sri Lanka. That tells me that they don't have many legs left. Great pass. Excellent. And Josh Anu pays them off double time. Two piece makes it 17 6. I think I remember at the beginning of this game saying that it was going to be a runaway. Or was that the other game? I can't remember. But uh, I think I'm five for five at this point. Can't even keep track of, keep track no, of your you're, mix. You're right. Six I'm for six. Six for six. Man. Just like Jordan. You know, what can I say? <laughs> oh. There you go. Well, guess what? Good execution of a two-man game. Good pass. Get a bucket. Would have loved to see more of that from Sri Lanka. Early on. Chopper nice. one with the delivery. Nice. And Lish getting the score, even though the Sun contested it well. Sim Ron. But you know what I like about that bucket uh, from Leash? It's I get the ball, give it to the big man, work around him. Look, faking that, that I'm coming for the handoff and backdooring. And you know, had the help side been quicker, Lish would have made that extra pass to the right wing for a two point shot. And it's just two teams playing two different brands of basketball right now, and Thailand is getting rewarded for it. Excellent. Ten-point game. Excellent performance from Thailand. Simran, step back. He strikes iron. Out of bounds, it'll go. It'll be white ball, Thailand.
415 left. And I don't. Oh. That was barbecue chicken right there. You can't mess up the meal. Even though he made it on the second attempt, that was not OK. Ooh. Oh, he obliterated that ball. He sent it to Valhalla. <laughs> Great Vikings. Hey! Oh. And then Jock Rawan buries it. R.I.P. Wilson. Tom Hanks ain't going to be happy about that one. <laughs> Look again at the replay. Jock Rawan with the monster mash. He wouldn't be happy to see Wilson be me street that way. <laughs> you talk about Castaway. <laughs> see, your commentary has to be well-rounded from music to movies. <laughs> We, we educate the we, youth. That's right. We, we just educate. educate, and that's all. <laughs> they, they, they giving uh, Sri Lanka some education. But we did talk about the fact that we thought Thailand could give us a better show, and they did exactly that. Much better. I was worried about them uh, after game one. Man, if you don't get up out of here. Hey, Jesu. He's got it back now. Up top. Jai Sanuk gives it to a Jesu. Back to you. You shoot it. I will. Stroke was broke. Oh, shoot. That was a heck of a collision into the 100 plus signage. Shout out to 100 plus, by the way. We've been having our, our energy drinks nice and cold, waiting for us all day, right? Correct. I didn't need one today. Second day of qualifying draw. I needed, a, I needed to have one of those 100 pluses. Well, maybe tomorrow you'll need one. You nope. never know. I will not. Last day? It's the second to last day. But I'm saying we need one of the hey, now. Well, Whoa, I, wait a sec. Well, was, was he really going yam yeah, nah, nah, on him? Nah, 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 was nah, he really nah. going yam yeah, on him? No, no, no. He hey, wasn't even close. Playing. He was not even close. Liz, stop playing. You wasn't going yam yeah, on him. <laughs> he was not. You earned it. But I tell you what, though. I love the smile. I love the body language. I love the attitude. I love what Thailand did. And I'm a bit disappointed because Sri Lanka was a team that made me so excited in the qualifying round and they lost that edge. But I, I'll put it on fatigue. I'll put it on inexperience. It's unfortunate for them, but I give them props because they showed us some great stuff. And uh, I'm looking forward to see their improvement in the years to come. Thailand off to the knockout round. Looking forward to see them on Sunday. They earned it. So I'm looking forward to seeing them as well. So day one of main draw pool play gave us some dandies. Got some nice highlights, some exciting games. The day started off with three straight overtime games. That got us so, late. So <laughs> that got us off target. That's off, true. Off schedule. Uh, got us off schedule. It even made us late from lunch. Well, well that, not late, that's a different but story. for no, we No, we weren't late. We weren't. For we were time, But we missed our <laughs> call time because of Angelo. Oh, uh -huh. oh you're going to put that on me now. Yeah. Him and the train operator. I don't know which <laughs> one, who to really blame, but it, it, it ended up working out. But a, but a, a great day. A great day uh, all together. We knew that the competition was going to step up right. uh, a level, and it did that. Right, right, and right. tomorrow, it's going to do the same. We'll have the men's teams in groups A and C, and the women's teams in groups B and D taking uh, center stage here tomorrow from the OCBC Square. So that means we'll see both the Australian men and the Australian women. We'll see the New Zealand women playing tomorrow. Uh, who else we got playing tomorrow? We got some heavy hitters tomorrow. Anyway, here's, here's how today looked. Here's how the day started. It was a close game. Went to overtime, New Zealand and Malaysia. A game that Malaysia probably could have won. They did not. New Zealand ends up, ends up going undefeated. China ends up going unbeaten for the women. The Philippines remain unbeaten all the way since the qualifying draw. Unfortunately for the local fans, Singapore's women's team will not be advancing. Today is the last day we will see them. Mongolian women will be moving on. If you don't believe me, I can just show you proof. Our graphics team has got it all together for us. Our production team, I should say. Mongolia, top uh, of their group. New Zealand men, top of their group. Cutter get in with a play-in uh, game win over Malaysia. And uh, here's the Chinese women I was speaking of. Chinese Taipei. 
by virtue of their victory over Singapore. They will be the number two team out of the group. And the way it will cross is A versus C, B versus D once we get to the quarterfinals. So half of that quarterfinal bracket is set, as you can see. It'll be New Zealand against Thailand, Mongolia against Qatar. That is in the men's bracket. As for the women's bracket, you'll see that right now. China, Mongolia, Philippines, Chinese Taipei. Those other slots will be filled by the end of business tomorrow. We got 12 more pool play games to go. Day four from Singapore. We'll be here, won't you? You're going to be back, Angelo? I think I'll be with you. I'll man. be here. I think I'm going to go enjoy this skyline tonight. 2.15 Two, right. two tomorrow, the final day of pool play. And then we'll get ready to hand out some medals on Sunday. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you guys for watching. We appreciate you. For Angelo Sagarakis, I'm Kyle Montgomery, a.k.a. The Voice. We'll see you tomorrow, same place, same time, 2.15 from OCBC Square.